all welcome to the new case based concept and differentiating point series in this we will see ms versus nmvst versus mogart so coming to the first case 26 year female came with history of chronic fatigue tremors visual disturbances bowel and bladder incontinence and even intermittent remissions and relapses you can see these are the actual t2 weighted flare images even the sagittal t2 weighted images you can see there are multiple hyper intensities noted in the caudal pons, right cerebellum, even multiple hyper intensities on T2 and flare located in the periventricular divide matter, centrosomia veil, even along the periependymal surface. And here you can sagittal sections, you can clearly see there are hyper intense lesions noted in the body and spin of carpus callosum involving the callosoceptal interface. And even there are multiple perpendicular hyper intense lesions running perpendicular to the body and spin of carpus callosum and these are typically resembling the das and fingers and callosoceptal interface is also involved next in the same case you can see multiple hyper intensities noted in the spinal cord they are non segmental distribution they are dist they are uh, involving the more than two thirds of the cross sections of the spinal cord on heavy contrast they are showing ring like enhancement and even plaque like enhancement so on heavy contrast in the brain you can see there are incomplete ring or peripheral ring enhancement or incomplete ring enhancement around the lesions and also there are ring like enhancement or plaque like enhancement noted in the spinal cord lesions. So this is a classical case of multiple sclerosis. Second case 35 year female came with complaints of intractable hiccups, vomitings and symptomatic narcolepsy with weakness of all four limbs. You can see these are sagittal T2 weighted images you can see there is a long segment T2 hyper is noted in the spinal cord involving cervical, thoracic and even the lumbar spinal cord. So this is diffuse hyper intensities involving the spinal cord and they are involving more than three contiguous vertebral bodies. So this is longitudinal extensive transverse myelitis picture. So there is typical LAT TM like picture in this case. So they are conspicuous on star, star images also and they are involving central hyper they are involving central part of the cord and even there is enhancement in the central part of the card and in the same case you can see there are hyper intensities adjacent to the fourth ventricle in the periventricular region and even adjacent to the medulla and also you can see in the same case there is even visual disturbances and there are hyper intensities in the posterior part of the optic nerve is the hyper intensity is also noted in the optic nerve but also predominantly posterior part of the optic nerve is hyper intense pre-chiasmatic segment and even chiasmatic region is hyper intense so this is a classical case of NMOSD. So long term extensive transverse myelitis with hyper intensities in the periventricular location and typical involvement of the bilateral optic nerves with hyper intensities in the posterior part of the optic nerve, pre-chiasmatic segment and in the chiasmatic region involvement favor NMOSD, neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder. So in NMOSD, we can you can remember there will be typical hyper intensities in the periapendable surface of the carpus callosum, hypothalamus, periacrodactyl gray and even periapendymal surface of the lateral ventricles, even periapendymal surface of the third ventricle, and even periacuductal gray matter. And this is the classical periapendymal surface of the fourth ventricle, and this is the area of post -trima. So anterior to the caudal, anterior to the caudal fourth ventricle, and in the dorsal part of the medulla, this is the area of post trima where there will be chemoreceptor trigger zone which controls the vomitings. So the patient may have severe vomitings. Next case, 32 year female with fever followed by altered sensorium, vision loss, paraparesis and bowel and bladder incontinence. You can see there are diffuse T2 oblicular hyper intensities, T2 hyper intensities noted in the spinal cord involving whole length of the spinal cord. So this is also the case presenting as LDTM, long term extensive transverse myelitis. Here these are the diffuse T2 hyper intensities and also there is mild expansion of the cord, mild expansion of the cord. And in the patient is also presenting with visual disturbances and there is typical bilateral optic neuritis and this is typically involving the anterior parts of the optic neuritis that is intraconal compartment is involved but the pre chiasmatic and chiasmatic region is paired so, and also in the same case you can see there are multiple hyper intensities noted in the pons in the posterior limb of internal capsule in the periventricular deep matter on the left side and there is typical bilateral optic neuritis so bilateral symmetrical optic neuritis with involvement of the brain stem with long term extensive transverse myelitis favor mogard that is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody associated disease 
So what are the difference between the orbits in MOGAD orbits and NMOSD orbits? In MOGAD orbits, there will be typical bilateral optic neuritis involving the anterior part of the optic nerves, whereas in NMOSD, posterior part of the optic nerves, pre-chasmatic segment and the optic chasmatic region are predominantly involved in NMOSD orbits. And even cryon is classically associated with MOGAD, which is chronic relapsing inflammatory optic neuritis. This is one picture where you can see this is the NMYSD where the pre-chasm poster part of the optic now pre-chasmatic segment and in the chasma is typically involved and there is predilection for the cervicothoracic spine involvement in NMYSD with typical periependymal or periventricular surface involvement. Whereas MOGAD there is bilateral optic neuritis predominantly involving the anterior, anterior part of the optic now with optic disc edema and there will be typical predilection for the lumbosacral spine or conus medullaris. And there will be typical brainstem encephalitis picture or ADM like picture in MOGAD. In multiple sclerosis, there can be optic neuritis, but will be short segment. There will be short segment involvement of this spinal cord, no predilection. And the, typically, there will be periventricular color septal interface lesions resembling DAS and fingers in MS. So, this is the three, pic three cases we can compare. This is the typical DAS and fingers, and even the involvement of the brainstem and even optic now optic neuritis in case of ms whereas in mogad there will be typical cerebral involvement brainstem involvement even pedunculate involvement and sometimes there can be typical cortical encephalitis like picture in bilateral they can be unilateral or bilateral so which is called flames that is fluid at flare attenuated flare attenuated sequence hyperintense lesions in anti emoji encephalitis associated with seizures and even there will be bilateral typical anti anterior optic neuritis Whereas in NMOSD disorders, you can see there will be pre-chasmatic segment, coptic chasmatic involvement, LETM-like picture with periependymal surface or periventricular surface involvement is classical for NMOSD. So we, we will try to see the differentiating points, few important differentiating points between MOGAD, NMOSD and multiple sclerosis. Demographics common in women and even clinical presentation at op, present clinical presentation at onset optic neuritis is common in mogad that is bilateral optic neuritis is common in mogad along with cryon that is chronic inflammatory chronic relapsing inflammatory optic neuropathies nmvsd also there will be optic neuritis and even multiple sclerosis there are less likely involvement of optic neuritis longitudinal extensive transverse neuritis is typically seen in nmvsd than mogad or multiple sclerosis brainstem encephalitis is typically seen in mogad than nmvsd and multiple sclerosis ADM like presentation or monophysic course is common in MOGAD than NMVSD or in multiple sclerosis. Coexisting autoimmune disease is common in NMVSD than MOGAD and multiple sclerosis. Criteria for diagnosis that is international consensus diagnostic criteria for MOGAD can be used. In NMVSD that is IPND International Panel for New NMO Disorders Diagnosis which is uh, which is seen uh, which is modified in 2015 and in multiple sclerosis there will be McDonald's criteria. In MRI features, supratentoral lesions are commonly very highly seen in multiple sclerosis or they are commonly seen in multiple sclerosis than MOGAD and NMYSD. Spinal MRI lesions, two-thirds of cases of present as LETM in MOGAD and typical lumbosacral and conus predilection is seen in MOGAD. Whereas 94% cases NMYSD, they present as longitudinal extensive transverse myelitis, central part of the spinal cord is involved and cervicothoracic regions are, have a, are more involved in case of NMYSD. Multiple sclerosis, short segment, any segment can be involved. Short lateral, any segment can be involved. Orbits involvement, we have, we have seen bilateral optic, anterior optic neuritis with optic disc edema in MOGAD, posterior part pre chasmatic and optic chasmatic predilection in NMOSD, and short segment non specific in MS. Periependymal surface, periventricular surface, and area of post tumors commonly involved in NMOSD. Flames and anti NMD receptor encephalitis are commonly seen in MOGAD than NMOSD and multiple sclerosis. And these are all the treatment. So this is the one chart where we can use as a diagnostic criteria or the uh, approach to the disease uh, case with brain or spinal cord MRI. So if it is typical of adult MS, then yes, then go for treatment of MS based on McDonald's criteria. If it is no, then see for features of NMVSD and check for aquaphorin antibodies. If they are positive, then treat as NMVSD. And if, the, and if it is also negative, NMOSD is negative, then if there is features of ADEM, check for emoji antibodies. If it is positive, then treat as MOGAD. And if they are not, not fitting into any of these criteria, then monitor for relapses. And sometimes even there will be aquaporin negative or emoji negative, there will be NMOSD antibody negative diseases also. And check for ADEM or consider alternative diagnosis. 
next in the uh, serum you can see uh, multiple sclerosis there will be oligoclonal bands and mrz reaction typically seen in multiple sclerosis in nmo there will be typical acoporin antibodies are positive in nmo and in mogard the anti mog antibodies are positive in mogard these are all the references thank you all